Good morning, Uganda and Congo. All you champions, top of the morning to you. This is FBI art from, from firm believers in Christ. And let's just start our, 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 our thing off with the presence of God. Everybody close their eyes and say these words. Jesus, I'm precious to you. Wow, you are precious to Jesus. You must understand this is a foundational thing. You are precious to Jesus. You are precious to Jesus. I said you're precious to Jesus. Jesus says you're precious to him. You felt his presence. That is what he wants you to know because that will turn you into champions. Otherwise, if you don't feel precious, you, you, you will uh, drift away from the Lord. So it's very important. These are words from heaven. Now, uh, last week, hey, hey, we, went, we went over who you were in Christ and why is that is so important. If you do not know who you are in Christ, you, no matter what uh, messages we give you, you'll be excited about them, you hear about them, you think that's a great message, but in reality, it, it, it will not hold with you. You'll go back and live like, uh, uh, like in a cave, like the Christians of old in the Old Testament. They were in the caves, hiding out, wondering what Goliath was going to do to them, instead of what they're going to do to Goliath. This is a new day. We are, you, we are champions. Say, I'm a champion. I'm a champion. That's I'm a champion. I'm a warrior for Christ. I'm a warrior for Christ. I'm bold. I'm strong. I'm the son of God. I'm a son of God, not the son. I son of God. Say that over and over to drives in your spirit. Ugandans and Congo guys, this is this is this is paramount that we drive this in. If we're going to change this world, we need you guys to know who Christ made you. Remember this scripture, and it's very important how this transfer happened. It's not that you always act like the Son of God, but as, as you put this in your spirit, you will start acting more like the Son of God instead of more like the devil. You know, if you go around and sin, you're a sinner, you're, you're going you're gonna to sin more. As a man thinketh, so he is. Remember that. Now, remember this here. Let's see, right now, let's see, Romans 5.19. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. You were made sinners. You were born that way. That was your nature. So by the obedience of one, Christ, many shall be made righteous. You were made righteous. You don't. You you were made righteous. Now you'll start acting like it when you know this. That's important. That's the first chapter, Romans five nineteen, and Romans uh, actually Second uh, Corinthians five twenty one. Drive that in your spirit. For he has made him to be sin. That's Jesus. He made him to be sin. He who knew no sin. Jesus never knew a sin. But he who knew no sin was made to be sin. That we may be made the righteous of God in him. That we may be made the righteous of God in him. Isn't that something else? You're the righteous of God. Wow, you're a saint. 61 times in the Bible it calls you a saint. Galatians 3.13 says Christ Redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed everyone that hangeth on the tree. He was cursed on that tree that you can receive the blessing of Amen. You can receive it. Right. That in John 3.15 says, Whoever believes on him should not perish but have ever, everlasting life. That's pretty good. That's awesome, isn't it? Romans uh, 5.6 says, For we were yet sinners. Yes, sir, that means we were, without strength. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5 eight. God commanded his love towards us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Wow. Romans uh, 5.10, For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, were enemies, we were reconciled to God by his death, and much more be made Reconcile, we shall be saved by his life. That is pretty good, is that not? We're going to be saved by his life. We're no more like this. We are sons of God. Wow, what do you mean by that, Art? You know, let's see. Let's see what the Bible says about it. Not what you think or what I think, because it doesn't really matter what I think. Let's re read this, what it says. In John 1.12, For as many as received him, to them... He gave the power to become sons of God, even to those who believed on his name. Wow, you 
were sons of the devil, now you become sons of God. Isn't that amazing? I can't believe it. I'm a son of God. You're a son of God. Say I'm a son of God. Wow. Do that. Say it right now. Romans 8, 14. For as many are led by the Spirit of God are, are the sons of God. Wow. This says you're the sons of God. I'm giving you multiple scriptures. Not one or two. Multiples. Let it go. Romans 8, 19. For the earth's expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. The whole earth is waiting for you to rise up and realize that you're not a sinner anymore. You're a saint. You're a son of God. And if you start acting like this, things will start changing. And we're going to go over some stuff today that you need to know. Philippians 2.15 that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shall shine as lights in the world. You can't shine as lights in the world if you don't know your sons of God. Because this is a crooked and perverse generation. They need to see your light. First John 3, 1 John 3.1 Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed in us, that we should be called... Sons of God. What did I just say there? That we should be called what? That we should be called sons of God. That we should be called sons of God. When people ask you who you are, you don't say, I'm John. Dan say, I'm Mark Montgomery, a son of God. And it, you start driving this into you, and you'll start acting like a son of God. And, 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 and if you act like a son of a devil, they won't think you're a son of God. If you're sinning and beating yourself up, you're going to sin more and you'll act more like the devil. But if you start saying, I'm a son of God, you will start acting like it. And I'm going to give you the last verse of the sons of God. 1 John 3, 2. Belo beloved, you are, now we are sons of God. Now listen to this right now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall be as he is. Now, it may not look like you're a son of God, it says here, but you are a son of God. That is so important to, to, to drive into your spirit. And if you don't drive that into your spirit, my friend, it's just a, it doesn't do whatever you say, whatever you do, it doesn't matter. Because this next thing I'm going to tell you to do, and we're going to uh, talk about this, we're going to talk about Mark 16, verses 15 to 20. This is, these are important words. Uh, these are very important words, and because these are Jesus' resurrected words of Jesus Christ, the Savior. They're not his regular words, they're him when he come out of the grave. So no matter what people tell you, this is his last command to you. And people will try to get away from these verses because they, they, there is no wiggle room. God tells you what the gospel is, exactly what to say, and what to do. The gospel is more than just saying. The gospel is doing. The gospel is demonstrating. And, and God gets in the middle of it and mess with you. Now listen to these words. These Jesus, the resurrected Jesus words. There's not many words like in the Bible. Aren't they important if they're his resurrected words? Wow. You know they are. It is so, so important. Okay, let's read them. Mark 16, verses 15 to 20. Then he said to them, Go ye all to the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hey, that is command. He didn't say, uh, take a choice. We must do this if we're Christians. Well, this is our job assignment. Mark 16, 16. And this is what you're supposed to say. This is Jesus saying, he that believeth is baptized shall be saved. Didn't say maybe, he said shall be saved. And he that believeth shall be damned. Now these are shells. These are nine shells in these verses. They're very important. Jesus is making no wiggle. He never says maybe or anything else. You gotta if he said maybe, you wouldn't have any faith in these verses. But he says, if you believeth and is baptized, you shall be saved. Now that's powerful. That's powerful. That tells you you have confidence in his word. This is the resurrected Jesus' words. If, if, if he wrote it, and if he didn't mean it, he shouldn't have wrote it here. But Jesus Christ meant this, so he wrote it. Isn't that amazing? And Mark 16, 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, uh, if you say you're a believer and you're a Christian, signs are supposed to follow you. It did not say maybe. It says these signs shall follow them. Wow.
what, you, what sides of these are. And, and it doesn't just mean, uh, it, it doesn't say uh, apostles, uh, prophets, masters. It say those who believe. So that means you. This is you. you can, nobody can wiggle out of this and say, I'm not a prophet. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a miracle worker. He said, God, Jesus says that these signs shall follow you that believe. If you believe, it's for you. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Whoa! What do you mean I cast out? That's right. That's your assignment. Cast out devils. And it says that you shall cast out devils. That's your job assignment. And they shall speak with new tongues. If you don't speak with tongues, you, you know, you still have that ability because Jesus says you shall speak with tongue, new tongues. Now, he would not give you an order to do something that you didn't have the ability. If you've got born again and you've asked the Holy Spirit to fill you and the gift of tongues, you've got that gift. Now, you need to unwrap the gift. That's your problem. You don't think you have the gift. You think, oh, just some people have it. No, you have the gift. You have to unwrap it. And the devil is trying to keep you from unwrapping it. And if you let him stop you, that's your problem. But Jesus gave you an order to speak with new tongues. And he would not have given you an order to do something if you did not have the ability, would he? Now, that would not be good. Uh, Mark uh, Mark's 16, 18. And they...